Hello everyone, it's Kay here and I'm here today to do the uh, tutorial for the ATC little albums that I shared with you in my last video. Enough people asked if I would mind doing the tutorial and so I am here today to take you through it. I've done a lot of preparatory work because I didn't want it to be an extended video but it may well be, so if you can bear with me I would appreciate that. On my work table here I have some good adhesive tape, I have some card, I have some designer paper, some grey board and these, which are the Ultra Pro Sleeve series uh, which I purchased on Amazon you get a hundred for just under three pounds the deal I got offered free postage and packaging but clearly that might not be an ongoing thing but in any event that's where you will find the individual sleeves for your ATC they've been around a while it's not something new so they should be quite easy to get hold of and you need for the way I do the project 12 sleeves so I'll put those out of the way the grey board I'm using I'll show you is um, it's not packaging I, I think probably about a millimetre in thickness yes one mil in thickness so you need something that isn't going to take too much to work with and to cut this goes through my guillotine quite nicely and you also uh, need to cut that down so you start off with cut your card stock and you need two pieces if you get these things ready before you get cracking it, it just saves you time and the each piece one is eight by three and a half which is this longer one the other one is six by three and a half and in good old-fashioned style you then concertina fold to the mountain and valley decide which way up you want your mountains to be turn it over and then put adhesive tape or a really really good glue in between each of those so you end up with that scenario and they're all together and it, it's almost like a Rolodex top you've not got any gaps in between you're not leaving spaces each mountain fold has a strip of adhesive between it and what you end up with then are 12 little mountains for each of your pages which is quite straightforward you then need I, I, I folded this you join it together I better just show you how I how I um, did that and I just put cut off one of the score lines on the larger one tuck that inside the shorter piece of card like so with the adhesive underneath and then if you go through and score this periodically as you go along you then turn it over to whichever side you want and you put your double sided tape in each of these grooves peel it off so as I say then you end up with the scenario that I showed you previously which is this kind of Rolodex if we if we call it that it keeps it makes it quite simple this Rolodex style spine for the little ATC journal it is very very flexible very very springy and you also make sure that on the flat side that goes into the spine of the journal that you have your tape on either side to anchor that down securely into the spine 
of your little journal. You then need your grey board unless you're lucky enough to have little children in the house that like the variety pack cereals and if you top and tail all the tabs of them and leave a spine so you're left with that area left of your box that actually this is what I made this one out of underneath here is a cereal box and then I just padded it up with the grey board and DSP and you get a really really effective and very solid cover for your journal but to save time I've actually cut out these and you need two pieces at two and three quarters by three and three quarters if you think about the size of an ATC you're actually adding a quarter of an inch all the way around well a quarter of an inch to the size of your card so it becomes I'll say it again two and three quarters in width and four and a quarter in depth so you need two of those and then your spine which is one and a half by four and a quarter and if I lay them down like that you can see you then have the front the back and the spine of your journal so that's all very very straightforward as it goes what I've done then for the sake of time is applied really good adhesive now if you like wet glue and tape if you like PVA glue whatever it is that works for you that you know to be strong put that onto the back of your pieces that make up the journal I've then selected my piece of DSP and this is 12 inches by six which gives me a, a nice lot of wrapping area on the card on the grey board and all you need to do I, I do I'm not measuring and so on it just takes up such a lot of time but what you want to do is place it roughly speaking on your DSP like so try and keep all your edges in a line like that and there is your layout to put onto your designer paper. If it's directional, bear that in mind because at this point you have the opportunity to turn it around to make the paper right. But after that, you're not in a great place to be able to do that. So I'm just going to peel off my red tape backing here. I've also got some Yoohoo glue which I am very partial to and I think what I'm going to do just for added security is spread a little bit of this in between my little gullies of red line tape because I really do want it to stick very well indeed. So I'm going to pop that down like so try as I say to keep it nice and straight and lined up. I've got my brayer here which I quite like to use for this kind of project and it just disperses any wet glue that's there and lets the the card anchor beautifully. The next one I want to do is the spine now if you're not sure about your spine then take a bit of your grey board that's left over or chipboard. I like to do it double because I want a nice fold on my journal and I don't want the paper to be stretched beyond its own endurance. So I put the two down, line it up, push that into place and then anchor that. Now I haven't put the Yoohoo on but for the spine it's not crucial at the moment. I can put some more on later on. Then I'm going to take off this last one and 
remove it all. Don't be shy, don't try and um, save on adhesive irrespective of whether it's wet or dry because you know if if the paper starts to give then that's the whole journal effectively looking shoddy before it's even been filled with all your wonderful ATC so it, it all needs to be borne in mind. Then my two bits again just to make sure my space is right and equal and then I'm going to place that down like so and just let that settle where it wants to with almost equal spacing between the pages. What I then do, and this is me, some people do, some people don't, again it's entirely up to you how you do these things, but I'm going to score around the edges of these pieces of grey board. A, I'm breaking up the fibres so they won't mind rolling around to be where I want them to be and B, it does make the process of wrapping your cover that little bit easier because you've preformed the shape that you want. You do the usual mitering and all of that good stuff and what I will do is just chip, do a gentle little notch up to the front there, not too steep, just enough again to make it easy to um, fold up the papers. One, two, you don't need too much chunkiness going on because of the way the spine goes in. And then just going to trim off a bit of the end here because it was the 12 inches but sooner have too much than too little and be able to trim it off. An A4 sheet of paper actually works quite well as well. And then I'm going to mitre the edges. I'm not going right up to that corner but I am taking out a nice little wedge from the corners ooh, at a slight angle to make sure that it all sits together quite nicely. And again at this end, not right up to the corner, leave that little gap. And again at this end. So you do that on each of your corners. Now if you've got corners that you'd like to apply to the um, grey board then that's entirely up to you. What I like to do then is apply my red line tape again and I put it right across. It's not the end of the world because you can then just snip up through here and again through here and you've got that nice fold facility on your designer paper across again. You can do it separately if you like but it is timely that I'm thinking about and trying to you know not take too long to do this because people don't have all the time in the world to just watch extended tutorials. I'm not as fast as Teresa Morgan who did hers, as I say, in nine minutes, but hey, we're getting there. So now it's up to you whether you put more glue on here or not. I think I shall. I probably, if I had more time, would have added some more red line to the top there, but there's still a little way to go to get this put together effectively. So that's that, and then starting wherever you like, wherever you're comfortable, peel off your red tape backing or whatever backing you use on your particular adhesive and really fold that up from the bottom 
I'll take off that side when it's not too late because it's only a small overlap there. Tuck it in your corner nice and tidily and I just use my nail for that. Some people will use um, their scoring tool or what have you but this oh, this works just as well she says. Right, I'm going to bring up the bottom. I'm leaving my sides to the end. I think that's tidier and then you've got all your larger flaps and split flaps covered. Again, take it up from the bottom. Don't worry about any splurges of glue. It really doesn't matter at this stage. Get off. It's very static. Fold this up. Onto the other side and fold again. And fold again. And you'll see already that I've got a nice little area here. When you come to fold your pages about and make them move to where you want them to be. Just bounce them. Don't try and make that fold in one fell swoop because if you do the fibres in your DSP irrespective of quality will be overstretched and they won't want to do it and you'll get some cracking or peeling in your cardstock. The other thing you can do is just run your score tool lightly between each of the spine gaps and that will again let the paper know where you want it to end up. After having done that you then bring in your side papers, really really position it well, get it really tucked in as nicely as you possibly can. That will make your short corners nice and sharp and make everything look really nicely finished on the inside and there you have the cover. I like this paper. It is actually um, Craft Sensations. I think I bought it in the range in Taunton a little while ago now. I never use anything right away. Um, so it's about choosing a paper that you like and then working with it I think as always. I'm just braying again to make sure that these papers know that I mean business and I'm not going to let them get away with anything. So that is that bit. Now I've got another piece of cards of the DSP here and I know I need to cover up these two and this but I want to do it in separate pieces so effectively all you need to do, and I can find my little piece of DSP which I've buried, is cut a tad short of what you cut in the very beginning for the grey board. So this will then be two and a half. And we want two of those. And then we want one and a quarter for the spine, which we'll just let that sit there like that. And all these lengths have to be four inches, which is very, very straightforward. There's no um, no worry, you, you're just covering up the gaps and making it all lovely and tidy on the inside. And again, then it's up to you whether you use your red line tape or adhesive. Because I need to anchor this down quite quickly, I will stick with my red tape. And what I shall do is... Just anchor it down as quickly as I can. There's one. 
make sure that my roses are all facing the right way. Now if you want to distress ink or what have you, clearly you do that once you've put your designer paper in place. Now I leave a, a wider edge on this side and take this right up to the edge of that inside page. I hope you can see what I mean because the spine will go here. You just want and don't want any grey board showing whilst you once you've got your DSP on because it's not a very pretty sight. So that's two If I had to sit and wait for this to dry, the Yoohoo is not bad, but uh, clearly the red line is, is better. That's that one. Out. Out. And out to make sure my roses are facing the right way. And I'm going to bring that in, line it up with that edge. Make sure it's central to the rest of the DSP. And there you go. And the same with the other side. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, I can see grey board. It's not a worry at this stage. So we'll just pop this down as well. I'm rushing here for the sake of time, but do make sure you take your adhesive right down to the edge of your page. You don't want corners lifting or anything like that because it just spoils the overall effect really. There we go, make sure my roses are the right way and I'm going to line it up this way, it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. Tuck in any overlaps of the adhesive that you might have, line it up to that page centrally or as centrally as you're able and there is the inside and the outside of your little ATC journal. Then you get the spine that you worked on prior to putting all of this together and this actually sits within the boundaries of the spine. You don't want it going on to either of the other pages because that's not what it's supposed to do. You just want to line up one side of your spine with that grey board that's lending itself beautifully to be lined up with. I hope you can see what I'm doing. and then the same on the other side. You need a little bit of freedom of movement with this and I'll, and I'll explain why shortly, but you bring that edge out again to the edge there and that then makes your spine. Work your spine a little bit and loosen it up so that you're ready then to pop your pages in, but that's it. Try and get it a bit more central than I have there, but with it being red tape, if I take it off, it's going to be absolutely ruined now. But you can see that having the spine where it is and slightly, slightly overlapping, it isn't going to detract from the closure of your little book which is rather lovely. Then what you do are pick, is pick up your 12 sleeves that you should have put, well you can do this at any point, but you, what I tend to do because I'm right handed is put my red line tape on the side nearest to me. I start at the back and I peel off that's my Tilly barking the place down and it sounds like my partner's home as well. Um, so I'm going to just anchor this to the back of the spine like so. 
and then again to peel off the red tape Oop. if it will come on slot it in between the next mountain or valley if you do this towards you then when you actually open up your ATC booklet or journal you don't actually see the workings of this bit it, it you just see the front the yeah the, the front aspect of the mountain bit if I show you that would be it opening so all you can see as you look at it is the fact that I'm using this colour if you like as the holder for the page so nothing is actually being seen to make it look a bit untidy or anything of that nature so put that in and that is literally all you do it does look a bit odd as you're putting it together primarily because as you go along and you get to this center bit which isn't anchored down into the folder by design it looks as though all the pages are uneven but once you put your ATC into the little folders that's not an issue at all they all just sit where you need them to be very very comfortably I just carry on and put these in I'm nearly there I think I did all this beforehand and if you do it all beforehand then it really is just about putting it together lining everything up and getting on with the job in hand it's not a difficult project to do by any means clearly if you're thinking closure and that kind of thing when you're applying your designer paper you have to decide whether you want to use ribbon or an eyelet or whatever pleases you it is personal choice at the end of the day oops that one went in wrong I'm very fortunate to have my um, handy cropper what do they call them oh my gosh cropper dial handy cropper yeah I've got a cropper dial so it, for me it's not important about putting remembering to put in ribbons or such like I just put my eyelets in on each of the pages and then in the spine for a little dangle there but this is very very straightforward as I said when I was showing the two that I made yesterday they come together so nicely I mean you once you get a feel for it and you've made that first one there will always be ways to improve on how you do things because we all craft differently I don't know you know I don't think there's anything that when it's shared stays as it's shared if that makes sense it all tends to get a little bit moved around and made to fit the purpose for whoever is making the project next which is lovely and so by the time they share again it's evolved and there are other little tips and things that you can utilize to make it your own but that is the last one going in now oops almost come along don't spoil it okay mm -hmm. it's a glorious day down in Taunton today it really is lovely but there it is you'll see what I mean about the pages being proud but by the time you actually put your ATC in which forces the spine 
which you, which you can see is a little bit looped there. By the time you put your cards in, everything comes back to where it needs to be, like this. Uh, this has got um, flat back pearls and that kind of thing. You can just see the whisper there. Um, but if, if your ATCs are flat and to size, then you won't have an issue. I, I do have some wooden ATC here and they do affect the balance of the thing quite effectively but it's up to you really what, what you choose to put into your little folders. I shall have fun now filling this up. I will put eyelet on either side of the front cover here, add some ribbon as I did with this one and I will put a little hole in the back in the spine so that I can then add a little dingle dangle but that is to all intents and purposes sorry about that corner it's really not great but it'll do me um, that is your little ATC folder which is absolutely joyful and it is 12 sleeves again so you know it's it's a it's a lovely way to display you can decorate more if you want to you don't have to have these creases in the paper you could take it right out to the edge and cover up the center it's entirely up to you it's just nice to be able to share this with you um do go along to Teresa Morgan if you get the opportunity she does some lovely lovely projects and you know I will let her know that I've taken her tutorial and done it my way so to speak and that I have acknowledged that she is the person that did the business in the first place so have fun everyone I hope you enjoy putting this together and I hope you give it a try if you do do share because it's always lovely to see and I'll say thank you for joining me today bring in the others that I've made and um, like I say I hope you have fun making your own ATC folders take care everyone happy crafting bye bye for now